Hans Albrecht Beta German Hans Al B July 2, 1906 to March 6, 2005, was a German-American nuclear physicist who made important contributions to astrophysics, quantum electrodynamics, and solid-state physics, and won the 1967 Nobel Prize in Physics for his work on the theory of stellar nucleosynthesis. For most of his career, Beta was a professor at Cornell University. During World War II, he was head of the theoretical division at the secret Los Alamos Laboratory, which developed the first atomic bombs. There he played a key role in calculating the critical mass of the weapons and developing the theory behind the implosion method used in both the Trinity test and the Fat Man weapon dropped on Nagasaki in August 1945. After the war, Beta also played an important role in the development of the hydrogen bomb, though he had originally joined the project with the hope of proving it could not be made. Beta later campaigned with Albert Einstein and the Emergency Committee of Atomic Scientists against nuclear testing and the nuclear arms race. He helped persuade the Kennedy and Nixon administrations to sign, respectively, the 1963 Partial Nuclear Test Ban Treaty and 1972 Anti-Ballistic Missile Treaty Salt I. His scientific research never ceased and he was publishing papers well into his 90s, making him one of the few scientists to have published at least one major paper in his field during every decade of his career, which, in Beta's case, spanned nearly 70 years. Freeman Dyson, once one of his students, called him the supreme problem solver of the 20th century. <laughs> Early years Beta was born in Strasbourg, which was then part of Germany, on July 2, 1906, the only child of Anna Kuhn and Albrecht Beta, a private dozen of physiology at the University of Strasbourg. Although his mother, the daughter of a professor at the University of Strasbourg, was Jewish, he was raised a Protestant like his father. Despite having a religious background, he was not religious in later life, and described himself as an atheist. His father accepted a position as professor and director of the Institute of Physiology at the University of Kiel in 1912, and the family moved into the director's apartment at the institute. He was initially schooled privately by a professional teacher as part of a group of eight girls and boys. The family moved again in 1915 when his father became the head of the new Institute of Physiology at the University of Frankfurt am Main. Beta attended the Goethe Gymnasium in Frankfurt, Germany. His education was interrupted in 1916, when he contracted tuberculosis, and he was sent to Bad Kreuznach to recuperate. By 1917, he had recovered sufficiently to attend the local Realschule, and the following year he was sent to the Odenwaldschule, a private, coeducational boarding school. He attended the Goethe Gymnasium again for his final three years of secondary schooling, from 1922 to 1924. Having passed his abitur, Beta entered the University of Frankfurt in 1924. He decided to major in chemistry. The instruction in physics was poor, and while there were distinguished mathematicians in Frankfurt like Carl Ludwig Siegel and Otto Schasch, Beta disliked their approaches, which presented mathematics without reference to the other sciences. Beta found that he was a poor experimentalist who destroyed his lab coat by spilling sulfuric acid on it, but he found the advanced physics taught by the associate professor, Walter Gerlach, more interesting. Gerlach left in 1925, and was replaced by Karl Meissner, who advised Beta that he should go to a university with a better school of theoretical physics, specifically the University of Munich, where he could study under Arnold Sommerfeld. Beta entered the University of Munich in April 1926, where Sommerfeld took him on as a student on Meissner's recommendation. Sommerfeld taught an advanced course on differential equations in physics, which Beta enjoyed. Because he was such a renowned scholar, Sommerfeld frequently received advance copies of scientific papers, which he put up for discussion at weekly evening seminars. When Beta arrived, Sommerfeld had just received Erwin Schrödinger's papers on wave mechanics. For his PhD thesis, Sommerfeld suggested that Beta examine electron diffraction in crystals. As a starting point, Sommerfeld suggested Paul Ewald's 1914 paper on X ray diffraction in crystals. Beta later recalled that he became too ambitious, and, in pursuit of greater accuracy, his calculations became unnecessarily complicated. When he met Wolfgang Pauli for the first time, Pauli told him, After Sommerfeld's tales about you, I had expected much better from you than your thesis. I guess from Pauli, Beta later recalled, that was a compliment. 
Early work After Beta received his doctorate, Erwin Madeling offered him an assistantship in Frankfurt, and in September 1928 Beta moved in with his father, who had recently divorced his mother. His father met Vera Kongel earlier that year, and married her in 1929. They had two children, Doris, born in 1933, and Klaus, born in 1934. Beta did not find the work in Frankfurt very stimulating, and in 1929 he accepted an offer from Ewald at the Technische Hochschule in Stuttgart. While there, he wrote what he considered to be his greatest paper, Zur Theorie des Durchgangs schneller Korpuskers trellen durch Matterie, The Theory of the Passage of Fast Corpuscular Rays Through Matter. Starting from Max Born's interpretation of the Schrödinger equation, Beta produced a simplified formula for collision problems using a Fourier transform, which is known today as the Beta formula. He submitted this paper for his habilitation in 1930. Sommerfeld recommended Beta for a Rockefeller Foundation traveling scholarship in 1929. This provided $150 a month, about $2000 in 2017 dollars to study abroad. In 1930, Beta chose to do postdoctoral work at the Cavendish Laboratory at the University of Cambridge in England, where he worked under the supervision of Ralph Fowler. At the request of Patrick Blackett, who was working with Cloud Chambers, Beta created a relativistic version of the Beta formula. Beta was also known for his sense of humor, and with Guido Beck and Wolfgang Riesler, two other postdoctoral research fellows, created a hoax paper on the quantum theory of the temperature of absolute zero where he calculated the fine structure constant from the absolute zero temperature in Celsius units. The paper poked fun at a certain class of papers in theoretical physics of the day, which were purely speculative and based on spurious numerical arguments such as Arthur Eddington's attempts to explain the value of the fine structure constant from fundamental quantities in an earlier paper. They were forced to issue an apology. For the second half of his scholarship, Beta chose to go to Enrico Fermi's laboratory in Rome in February 1931. He was greatly impressed by Fermi and regretted that he had not gone to Rome first. Beta developed the beta ansatz, a method for finding the exact solutions for the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of certain one-dimensional quantum many-body models. He was influenced by Fermi's simplicity and Sommerfeld's rigor in approaching problems, and these qualities influenced his own later research. The Rockefeller Foundation offered an extension of Beta's fellowship, allowing him to return to Italy in 1932. In the meantime, Beta worked for Sommerfeld in Munich as a private doesn't. Since Beta was fluent in English, Sommerfeld had Beta supervise all his English-speaking postdoctoral fellows, including Lloyd P. Smith from Cornell University. Beta accepted a request from Carl Scheele to write an article for the Handbuch der Physik on the quantum mechanics of hydrogen and helium. Reviewing the article decades later, Robert Bacher and Victor Weisskopf noted that it was unusual in the depth and breadth of its treatment of the subject, yet required very little updating for the 1959 edition. Beta was then asked by Sommerfeld to help him with the Handbuch article on electrons in metals. The article covered the basis of what is now called solid-state physics. Beta took a very new field and provided a clear, coherent and complete coverage of it. His work on the Handbuch articles occupied most of his time in Rome, but he also co-wrote a paper with Fermi on another new field, quantum electrodynamics, describing the relativistic interactions of charged particles. In 1932, Beta accepted an appointment as an assistant professor at the University of Tübingen, where Hans Geiger was the professor of experimental physics. One of the first laws passed by the new National Socialist government was the law for the restoration of the professional civil service. Due to his Jewish background, Beta was dismissed from his job at the university, which was a government post. Geiger refused to help, but Sommerfeld immediately gave Beta back his fellowship at Munich. Sommerfeld spent much of the summer term of 1933 finding places for Jewish students and colleagues. Beta left Germany in 1933, moving to England after receiving an offer for a position as lecturer at the University of Manchester for a year through Sommerfeld's connection to William Lawrence Bragg. He moved in with his friend Rudolf Peierls and Peierls' wife Genia. Peierls was a fellow German physicist who had also been barred from academic positions in Germany because his parents were Jewish. This meant that Beta had someone to speak to in German, and did not have to eat English food. Their relationship was professional as well as personal. Peierls aroused Beta's interest in nuclear physics. 
After James Chadwick and Maurice Goldhaber discovered the photodisintegration of deuterium, Chadwick challenged Beta and Peierls to come up with a theoretical explanation of this phenomenon. This they did on the four-hour train ride from Cambridge back to Manchester. Beta would investigate further in the years ahead. In 1933, the physics department at Cornell was looking for a new theoretical physicist, and Lloyd Smith strongly recommended Beta. This was supported by Bragg, who was visiting Cornell at the time. In August 1934, Cornell offered Beta a position as an acting assistant professor. Beta had already accepted a fellowship for a year to work with Neville Mott at the University of Bristol for a semester, but Cornell agreed to let him start in the spring of 1935. Before leaving for the United States, he visited the Niels Bohr Institute in Copenhagen in September 1934, where he proposed to Hilde Levi, who accepted. However, the match was opposed by Beta's mother, who did not want him marrying a Jewish girl, despite being Jewish herself, and Beta broke off their engagement a few days before their wedding date in December. Niels Bohr and James Franck were so shocked by Beta's behavior that he was not invited to the Institute again until after World War II. <laughs> Topic. United States Beta arrived in the United States in February 1935, and joined the faculty at Cornell University on a salary of $3,000. Beta's appointment was part of a deliberate effort on the part of the new head of its physics department, Roswell Clifton Gibbs, to move into nuclear physics. Gibbs had hired Stanley Livingston, who had worked with Ernest Lawrence, to build a cyclotron at Cornell. To complete the team, Cornell needed an experimentalist, and, on the advice of Beta and Livingston, recruited Robert Bacher. Beta received requests to visit Columbia University from Isidore Isaac Rabi, Princeton University from Edward Condon, University of Rochester from Lee DeBridge, Purdue University from Karl Lark Horowitz, the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign from Francis Wheeler Loomis, and Harvard University from John Hasbrook Van Vleck. Gibbs moved to prevent Beta from being poached by having him appointed as a regular assistant professor in 1936, with an assurance that promotion to professor would soon follow. Together with Bacher and Livingston, Beta published a series of three articles, which summarized most of what was known on the subject of nuclear physics until that time, an account that became informally known as Beta's Bible, and remained the standard work on the subject for many years. In this account, he also continued where others left off, filling in gaps in the older literature. Loomis offered Beta a full professorship at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, but Cornell matched the offer, and the salary of $6,000. He wrote to his mother, I am about the leading theoretician in America. That does not mean the best. Wigner is certainly better and Oppenheimer and Teller probably just as good. But I do more and talk more and that counts too. On March 17, 1938, Beta attended the Carnegie Institute and George Washington University's fourth annual Washington Conference of Theoretical Physics. There were only 34 invited attendees, but they included Gregory Breit, Subramanian Chandrasekhar, George Gamow, Donald Menzel, John von Neumann, Bank Stromgren, Edward Teller and Merle Tuve. Beta initially declined the invitation to attend, because the conference's topic, stellar energy generation, did not interest him, but Teller persuaded him to come. At the conference, Stromgren detailed what was known about the temperature, density and chemical composition of the Sun, and challenged the physicists to come up with an explanation. Gamow and Carl Friedrich von Weizsäcker had proposed in a 1937 paper that the Sun's energy was the result of a proton-proton chain reaction but this did not account for the observation of elements heavier than helium. By the end of the conference, Beta, working in collaboration with Charles Critchfield, had come up with a series of subsequent nuclear reactions that explained how the sun shines. That this did not explain the processes in heavier stars was not overlooked. At the time there were doubts about whether the proton-proton cycle described the processes in the sun, but more recent measurements of the sun's core temperature and luminosity show that it does. When he returned to Cornell, Beta studied the relevant nuclear reactions and reaction cross-sections, leading to his discovery of the carbon-nitrogen-oxygen cycle, CNO cycle The two papers, one on the proton-proton cycle, co-authored with Critchfield, and the other on the carbon-oxygen-nitrogen cycle, were sent to the Physical Review for publication. After Kristallnacht, Beta's mother had become afraid to remain in Germany. 
Taking advantage of her Strasbourg origin, she was able to emigrate to the United States in June 1939 on the French quota, rather than the German one, which was full. Beta's graduate student Robert Marshak noted that the New York Academy of Sciences was offering a $500 prize for the best unpublished paper on the topic of solar and stellar energy. So Beta, in need of $250 to release his mother's furniture, withdrew the CNO cycle paper and sent it in to the New York Academy of Sciences. It won the prize, and Beta gave Marshak $50 finder's fee and used $250 to release his mother's furniture. The paper was subsequently published in the Physical Review in March. It was a breakthrough in the understanding of the stars, and would win Beta the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1967. In 2002, at age 96, Beta sent a handwritten note to John N. Bacall congratulating him on the use of solar neutrino observations to show that the CNO cycle accounts for about 7% of the Sun's energy. The neutrino observations had started with Raymond Davis Jr., whose experiment was based on Bacall's calculations and encouragement, and led to Davis's receiving a share of the 2002 Nobel Prize. Beta married Rose Ewald, the daughter of Paul Ewald, on September 13, 1939, in a simple civil ceremony. They had two children, Henry and Monica. Henry was a contract bridge expert and former husband of Kitty Munson Cooper. He became a naturalized citizen of the United States in March 1941. Writing to Sommerfeld in 1947, Beta confided that, I am much more at home in America than I ever was in Germany. As if I was born in Germany only by mistake, and only came to my true homeland at 28. Topic. Manhattan Project When the Second World War began, Beta wanted to contribute to the war effort, but was unable to work on classified projects until he became a citizen. Following the advice of the Caltech aerodynamicist Theodore von Karman, Beta collaborated with his friend Teller on a theory of shock waves which are generated by the passage of a projectile through a gas. Beta considered it one of their most influential papers. He also worked on a theory of armor penetration, which was immediately classified by the Army, making it inaccessible to Beta, who was not an American citizen at the time. After receiving security clearance in December 1941, Beta joined the MIT Radiation Laboratory, where he invented the Beta Hole Directional Coupler, which is used in microwave waveguides such as those used in radar sets. In Chicago in June 1942, and then at the University of California, Berkeley, in July, he participated in a series of meetings at the invitation of Robert Oppenheimer, which discussed the first designs for the atomic bomb. They went over the preliminary calculations by Robert Serber, Stan Frankel, and others, and discussed the possibilities of using uranium-235 and plutonium. Teller then raised the prospect of a thermonuclear device, Teller's super bomb. At one point Teller asked if the nitrogen in the atmosphere could be set alight. It fell to Beta and Emil Konopinski to perform the calculations to prove that this could not occur. The fission bomb had to be done. He later recalled. Because the Germans were presumably doing it. When Oppenheimer was put in charge of forming a secret weapons design laboratory, Los Alamos, he appointed Beta director of the T theoretical division, the laboratory's smallest but most prestigious division. This move irked the equally qualified but more difficult to manage Teller and Felix Bloch, who had coveted the job. A series of disagreements between Beta and Teller between February and June 1944 over the relative priority of super research led to Teller's group being removed from T Division and placed directly under Oppenheimer. In September, it became part of Fermi's new F Division. Beta's work at Los Alamos included calculating the critical mass and efficiency of uranium 235 and the multiplication of nuclear fission in an exploding atomic bomb. Along with Richard Feynman, he developed a formula for calculating the bomb's explosive yield. After August 1944, when the laboratory was reorganized and reoriented to solve the problem of the implosion of the plutonium bomb, Beta spent much of his time studying the hydrodynamic aspects of implosion, a job which he continued into 1944. In 1945, he worked on the neutron initiator, and later on radiation propagation from an exploding atomic bomb. The Trinity nuclear test validated the accuracy of T-Division's results. When it was detonated in the New Mexico desert on July 16, 1945, Beta's immediate concern was for its efficient operation, and not its moral implications. He is reported to have commented, 
I am not a philosopher. Topic: <inaudible> Hydrogen bomb. After the war, Beta argued that a crash project for the hydrogen bomb should not be attempted, though after President Harry Truman announced the beginning of such a project and the outbreak of the Korean War, Beta signed up and played a key role in the weapons development. Though he would see the project through to its end, Beta hoped that it would be impossible to create the hydrogen bomb. He would later remark in 1968 on the apparent contradiction in his stance, having first opposed the development of the weapon and later helping to create it. Just a few months before, the Korean War had broken out, and for the first time I saw direct confrontation with the communists. It was too disturbing. The Cold War looked as if it were about to get hot. I knew then I had to reverse my earlier position. If I did not work on the bomb, somebody else would. And I had thought if I were around Los Alamos I might still be a force for disarmament. So I agreed to join in developing the H-bomb. It seemed quite logical. But sometimes I wish I were a more consistent idealist. As for his own role in the project, and its relation to the dispute over who was responsible for the design, Beta later said that, After the H-bomb was made, reporters started to call Teller the father of the H-bomb. For the sake of history, I think it is more precise to say that Ulam is the father, because he provided the seed, and Teller is the mother, because he remained with the child. As for me, I guess I am the midwife. In 1954, Beta testified on behalf of J. Robert Oppenheimer during the Oppenheimer security hearing. Specifically, Beta argued that Oppenheimer's stances against developing the hydrogen bomb in the late 1940s had not hindered its actual development, a topic which was seen as a key motivating factor behind the hearing. Beta contended that the developments which led to the successful teller ulam design were a matter of serendipity and not a question of manpower or logical development of previously existing ideas. During the hearing, Beta and his wife also tried hard to convince Edward Teller against testifying. However, Teller did not agree, and his testimony played a major role in the revocation of Oppenheimer's security clearance. While Beta and Teller had been on very good terms during the pre-war years, the conflict between them during the Manhattan Project, and especially during the Oppenheimer episode, permanently marred their relationship. Topic. Later work Topic. Lamb shift After the war ended, Beta returned to Cornell. In June 1947, he participated in the Shelter Island Conference. Sponsored by the National Academy of Sciences and held at the Rams Head Inn on Shelter Island, New York, the conference on the Foundations of Quantum Mechanics was the first major physics conference held since the war. It was a chance for American physicists to come together, pick up where they had left off before the war, and establish the direction of post-war research. A major talking point at the conference was the discovery by Willis Lamb and his graduate student Robert Rutherford shortly before the conference began that one of the two possible quantum states of hydrogen atoms had slightly more energy than predicted by the Paul Dirac's theory. This became known as the Lamb shift. Oppenheimer and Weisskopf suggested that this was a result of quantum fluctuations of the electromagnetic field. Pre-war quantum electrodynamics QED gave absurd, infinite values for this, but the Lamb shift showed that it was both real and finite. Hans Kramers proposed renormalization as a solution, but no one knew how to do the calculation. Beta managed to work it out on the train from New York to Schenectady. He arrived at a value of 1,040 MHz, extremely close to that obtained experimentally by Lamb and Rutherford. He did so by realizing that it was a non-relativistic process, which greatly simplified the calculations. His paper, published in the Physical Review in August 1947 was only two pages long and contained just 12 mathematical equations, but was enormously influential. Hitherto, it had been assumed that the infinities meant that QED was fundamentally flawed, and that a new, radical theory was required. Beta demonstrated that this was not necessary. One of Beta's most famous papers is one he never wrote, the 1948 Alpha Beta Gamo paper. George Gamo added Beta's name in absentia without consulting him, knowing that Beta would not mind, and against Ralph Alpher's wishes. This was apparently a reflection of Gamow's sense of humor, wanting to have a paper title that would sound like the first three letters of the Greek alphabet. As one of the Physical Review's reviewers, Beta saw the manuscript and struck out the words, in absentia. 
Topic: <laughs> Astrophysics. Beta believed that the atomic nucleus was like a quantum liquid drop. He investigated the nuclear matter problem by considering the work done by Keith Bruckner on perturbation theory. Working with Jeffrey Goldstone, he produced a solution for the case where there was an infinite hard core potential. Then, working with Baird Brandau and Albert Petschek, he came up with an approximation that converted the scattering equation into an easily solved differential equation. This then led him to the beta fadiev equation, a generalization of Ludwig Fadiev's approach to three-body scattering. He then used these techniques to examine the neutron stars, which have densities similar to those of nuclei. Beta continued to do research on supernovae, neutron stars, black holes, and other problems in theoretical astrophysics into his late 90s. In doing this, he collaborated with Gerald E. Brown of Stony Brook University. In 1978, Brown proposed that they collaborate on supernovae. These were reasonably well understood by this time, but the calculations were still a problem. Using techniques honed from decades of working with nuclear physics, and some experience with calculations involving nuclear explosions, Beta tackled the problems involved in stellar gravitational collapse, and the way in which various factors affected a supernova explosion. Once again, he was able to reduce the problem to a set of differential equations, and solve them. At age 85, Beta wrote an important article about the solar neutrino problem, in which he helped establish the conversion mechanism for electron neutrinos into muon neutrinos proposed by Stanislav Mikheyev, Alexei Smirnov and Lincoln Wolfenstein to explain a vexing discrepancy between theory and experiment. Beta argued that physics beyond the standard model was required to understand the solar neutrino problem, because it assumed that neutrinos have no mass, and therefore cannot metamorphosize into each other, whereas the MSW effect required this to occur. Beta hoped that corroborating evidence would be found by the Sudbury Neutrino Observatory Snow in Ontario, Canada, by his 90th birthday, but he did not get the call from Snow until June 2001, when he was nearly 95. In 1996, Kip Thorne approached Beta and Brown about LIGO, the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory, designed to detect the gravitational waves from merging neutron stars and black holes. Since Beta and Brown were good at calculating things that could not be seen, could they look at the mergers? The 90-year-old Beta quickly became enthused, and soon began the required calculations. The result was a 1998 paper on the evolution of binary compact objects which merge, which Brown regarded as the best that the two produced together. <laughs> Political stances In 1968, Beta, along with IBM physicist Richard Garwin, published an article criticizing in detail the anti-ICBM defense system proposed by the Department of Defense. The two physicists described in the article that nearly any measure taken by the U.S. would be easily thwarted with the deployment of relatively simple decoys. Beta was one of the primary voices in the scientific community behind the signing of the 1963 Partial Test Ban Treaty prohibiting further atmospheric testing of nuclear weapons. During the 1980s and 1990s, Beta campaigned for the peaceful use of nuclear energy. After the Chernobyl disaster, Beta was part of a committee of experts that analyzed the incident. They concluded that the reactor suffered from a fundamentally faulty design and human error also had significantly contributed to the accident. My colleagues and I established, he explained, that the Chernobyl disaster tells us about the deficiencies of the Soviet political and administrative system rather than about problems with nuclear power. Throughout his life, Beta remained a strong advocate for electricity from nuclear energy, which he described in 1977 as a necessity, not merely an option. In the 1980s he and other physicists opposed the Strategic Defense Initiative missile system conceived by the Ronald Reagan administration. In 1995, at the age of 88, Beta wrote an open letter calling on all scientists to cease and desist from working on any aspect of nuclear weapons development and manufacture. In 2004, he joined 47 other Nobel laureates in signing a letter endorsing John Kerry for President of the United States as someone who would Restore science to its appropriate place in government. Historian Greg Herkin wrote, When Oppenheimer died, Oppie's longtime friend, Hans Bethe, assumed the mantle of the scientist of conscience in this country. Like Jefferson and Adams, Teller and Bethe would live on into the new century which they and their colleagues had done so much to shape. 
Topic: Personal life. Beta's hobbies included a passion for stamp collecting. He loved the outdoors, and was an enthusiastic hiker all his life, exploring the Alps and the Rockies. He died in his home in Ithaca, New York on March 6, 2005 of congestive heart failure. He was survived by his wife Rose and two children. At the time of his death, he was the John Wendell Anderson Professor of Physics, Emeritus at Cornell University. Topic. Honors and awards Beta received numerous honors and awards in his lifetime and afterwards. He became a Fellow of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences in 1947, and that year was received the National Academy of Sciences's Henry Draper Medal. He was awarded the Max Planck Medal in 1955, the Franklin Medal in 1959, the Royal Astronomical Society's Eddington Medal and the United States Atomic Energy Commission's Enrico Fermi Award in 1961, the Rumford Prize in 1963, the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1967, the National Medal of Science in 1975, Ersted Medal in 1993, the Bruce Medal in 2001, and the Benjamin Franklin Medal for Distinguished Achievement in the Sciences by the the American Philosophical Society posthumously in 2005, Beta was elected foreign member of the Royal Society in 1957, and he gave the 1993 Bakarian Lecture at the Royal Society on the Mechanism of Supernovae. In 1978 he was elected a member of the German Academy of Sciences Leopoldina. Cornell named the third of five new residential colleges, each of which is named after a distinguished former member of the Cornell faculty, Hans Bethe Haus after him, as was the Hans Bethe Center, 322 4th Street, Northeast Washington, D.C., home to the Council for a Livable World, where Bethe was a longtime board member, and the Bethe Center for Theoretical Physics at University of Bonn in Germany. He also has an asteroid, 30828 Beta, that was discovered in 1990 named after him, as was the American Physical Society's Hans Bethe Prize. Topic. Selected publications Beta, H. A. Theory of High Frequency Rectification by Silicon Crystals Massachusetts Institute of Technology MIT Radiation Laboratory United States Department of Energy through predecessor agency the Atomic Energy Commission October 29 1942 Beta HA Theoretical estimate of maximum possible nuclear explosion Knowles Atomic Power Laboratory Schenectady, New York, United States Department of Energy through predecessor agency the Atomic Energy Commission, January 31, 1950. Beta, H. A., Roger Raman, R. Three-Body Problem in Nuclear Matter. University of Southern California Los Angeles, United States Department of Energy through predecessor agency the Atomic Energy Commission, 1967. Beta, H. A. Note on inverse Bremsstrahlung in a strong electromagnetic field. Los Alamos National Laboratory, Lanel, United States Department of Energy, through predecessor agency, the Atomic Energy Commission, September 1972. Beta H A. Pauli principle and pion scattering. Los Alamos National Laboratory, Lanel, United States Department of Energy, through predecessor agency, the Atomic Energy Commission, October 1972. Beta, H. A. Fusion Hybrid Reactor. Sandia National Laboratories, United States Department of Energy, August 1981. Notes Citations References Bernstein, Jeremy. 1980. Hans Bethe, Prophet of Energy. New York, Basic Books. ISBN 978 0 465 02903 7. Bethe, Hans A. 1991. The Road from Los Alamos. New York, American Institute of Physics. ISBN 978 0 88318 707 4. Brian, Dennis. The Voice of Genius, Conversations with Nobel Scientists and Other Luminaries. Cambridge, Massachusetts, Perseus Pub. ISBN 978-0-7382-0447-5.
Brown, Gerald E. Lee, Sabine, 2009. Hans Albrecht Beta, PDF. Biographical Memoirs. Washington, D.C., National Academy of Sciences. Brown, Gerald E., Lee, Chong Wan, eds. 2006. Hans Beta and His Physics. New Jersey, World Scientific Publishing. ISBN 9812566090. Herc, Ron, Gregg. 2002. Brotherhood of the Bomb, The Tangled Lives and Loyalties of Robert Oppenheimer, Ernest Lawrence, and Edward Teller. New York, Henry Holt and Company. ISBN 0-8050-6588-1. Hodison, Lillian, Henriksen, Paul W., Mead, Roger A., Westfall, Catherine L. 1993. Critical Assembly, A Technical History of Los Alamos During the Oppenheimer Years, 1943-1945. New York, Cambridge University Press. ISBN 0-521-44132-3. OCLC 26764320. Schwieber, Sylvan S. 2000. In the Shadow of the Bomb, Beta, Oppenheimer, and the Moral Responsibility of the Scientist. Princeton, Princeton University Press. ISBN 978-0-691-04989-2. Schwieber, Sylvan S. 2012. Nuclear Forces, The Making of the Physicist Hans Bethe. Cambridge, Massachusetts, Harvard University Press. ISBN 978-0-674-06587-1. SZASZ, Ferenc Morton British Scientists and the Manhattan Project, The Los Alamos Years. New York, St. Martin's Press. ISBN 978-0-312-06167-8. OCLC 23901666. External links 1986 Video Interview War and Peace in the Nuclear Age 1993 audio interview with Hans Bethe by Richard Rhodes Voices of the Manhattan Project 1982 audio interview with Hans Bethe by Martin Sherwin Voices of the Manhattan Project 2014 video interview with Rose Bethe by Cynthia C. Kelly Voices of the Manhattan Project Three lectures by Hans Bethe, from the Cornell University Text of the Eddington Medal Award speech Obituaries Hans Bethe Obituary from The Economist magazine Hans Bethe Obituary from The Guardian newspaper Annotated bibliography for Hans Bethe from the Alsos Digital Library for Nuclear Issues Oral History Interview Transcript with Hans Bethe 17 January 1967, American Institute of Physics, Niels Bohr Library and Archives Video of a talk titled, Writing the Biography of a Living Scientist, Hans Bethe Delivered by S. S. Schwieber Hans Bethe tells his life story at Web of Stories O'Connor, John J., Robertson, Edmund F. Hans Bethe. MacTutor History of Mathematics Archive, University of St. Andrews. Hans Bethe at the Mathematics Genealogy Project Boley, Roger, Merrifield, Michael, Padilla, Antonio Tony. Abgi the Alpha Beta Gamma Paper. 60 Symbols. Brady Heron for the University of Nottingham.